see you there. I'm meteorologist Hayden Nix along with Mr. Thomas Lipham here at the Museum of Discovery. And guess what? It's time for another episode of Hat Homes Discoveries. And we've got something really fun. It involves pans, ping pong ball. Thomas, walk us through what we're going to be doing. Yeah, this one's really simple but can be really elaborate and uh, really fulfilling at home. Okay. What we're going to be doing is exploring trajectory. Okay. So whenever we have a ping pong ball, these things are really rigid and they're going to bounce really well. Right. Uh, and we're going to use some pots and pans to explore what happens when you bounce this ping pong ball at different angles. Okay. So the angle is basically where the face is meeting our, uh, our objects. Okay. So if we have this flat with the table, that's going to be called parallel. Okay. So if this is parallel and we drop it from straight up, it's for the most part going to want to bounce straight back up. Okay. Now as we start adjusting that, it's going to bounce a little differently. So you can get some stuff at home. I have these little wooden blocks. You can use a book, you can use um, an Amazon box, really anything Be creative with it. to kind of tilt it at an angle. And then you can start exploring how that changes okay. the path of where the ping pong ball goes. So instead of it bouncing straight up and down, it's going to bounce at an angle. Okay. Now, the reason this is important for everybody to learn and understand is it has a lot to do with the sports that we play. Okay. So depending on what sport you're playing, you're going to want a different type of path that your ball will take. If you think about like baseball, for example, that's one of the few sports that we can play right now. Uh, baseball, to hit that home run, you're going to want a really specific angle to get maximum distance, which tends to be around 45 degrees. Uh, whereas uh, golf, if you're trying to hit a chip shot, you're going to want it to go up and over the bunker and then land down. So you're going to want to have that wedge to go underneath it. Okay. And say like tennis, one last one. If you hit it towards your opponent, you don't want to give them much time to react. So you're going to want a straight across angle to where your racket is basically uh, perpendicular or 90 degrees to the ground. And there's nuances within that. But the whole idea is that different sports uses different trajectories uh, in their games. So awesome. So you've got all of that, especially in the real world. Now, to bring all this at home and to understand that a little bit more and to have plenty of time to do this, you can do it with the simple pots and pans that you have in the house. And you've actually made a really cool setup over here. I'm having to be very careful not to mess with it because he says if you move this, everything is ruined. So you have set up a cool little system here. And this is something you could, I guess, make it really more complex than this. Yeah, so what we have is uh, multiple trajectories. So we're going to have a, kind of a ricochet effect. Okay. So we're going to drop and then it's gonna hopefully bounce a few times over. It's gonna take a few times because we're dealing with a lot of variables. Uh, one of the things that uh, when you're doing this at home, you're gonna wanna make sure and do is drop it from the same spot every single time. That's gonna help make it a little bit more consistent. Um, the other thing to pay attention to is the type of pan you use. If it has a little bit more of a solid bottom, it's more likely to bounce well. If you have, uh, Hayden didn't know this, but I gave him a not so great one. Uh, this one, I did. So it doesn't have as strong of a bottom and it actually absorbs a little bit of the force and you really want it to uh, have a solid bottom. So uh, this one is going to start up here and it's going to fall down and hopefully we'll see it hit at least one or two. We got two of them that time and if it's, uh, if we get just a little bit of luck, oh, we were so close. That would have been the dream. Oh, there it is. Oh my goodness. That. The odds were uh, not in our favor there, but it actually worked out. That was, we have about a one in 30 uh, chance and hey, we got it on the That's third try. Awesome. Now, Thomas, this is something that we have learned and hopefully you have been as we've gone through these episodes. This is trial and error. Right? Oh, absolutely. Very much so part of science and experiments, trying the different pot sizes. You may not have the exact ones that we have here, so you may have to set this up completely different, but it's all part of the fun and learning how all this works out. That's exactly right. And you know, this one is, it looks really simple, but it's pretty elaborate and it took a, a um, embarrassing amount of time to set up, um, especially with the consistency. So I'm going to show you one version that's really good for some of our early learners at home. So instead of having like a really small target, which is a cup with uh, water in it, you can have one bounce and a lot of opportunities for it to land in it. Okay. So I've got a sea of bowls. And so the smallest of our learners can learn to throw it and then just kind of bounce it at different angles to see, of course I get it in between them. Um, you can just have fun with it and they can try from different heights and see what that does any differently. And uh, of course, different angles and different amounts of force. So it's a great way for our early learners to get to play with trajectory as well. Awesome, and yeah, and also kind of keep up with how many bowls or which bowls that they actually land in too. That can be a part That's of right. Well. Man, this sounds like a lot of fun and I think 
Thomas are gonna, I are gonna have a little more fun practicing his little setup here. And make it as simple as you want, or maybe it's as complex as you want, but just remember to have fun with it in the end and know that you are learning. That's gonna do it for this episode of At Home Discoveries. Make sure to tune in next time to see what we have in store.